Welcome back, friends and frenemies, to another episode of Manga Transdub Theater. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, where we take public domain Japanese comics, English size them, and then uh, make funny noises. I'm your host, translator, sound engineer, director, and hapless woodcutter, Nicholas Tyson. Today, we have another exciting installment of Kabashima and Oda's Shochan Adventures. In our previous episode, <laughs> Squirrel and Show tagged along with the Seven Lucky Gods and somehow provided the basis for early capital formation throughout Japan. Huh. You can check out that episode on this channel, but today we have... In very fuzzy katakana, <laughs> Shiranui, which is, um, sh sh Shiranui. So this refers to an optical phenomenon seen over the ocean in parts of southwestern Japan, the cause of which has been studied for some time now, but for which there isn't really a definitive explanation. It's supposed to mean unknown fire, but that would imply that the pronunciation here should be Shiranhi. Shiranhi. <laughs> but it's clearly Shiranui. I don't know, man. L let's just get to the story. The sound of waves can be heard crashing against the coast of Ariake Bay in Kyushu. It was getting late into the night when our companions rested their weary legs on the shore. There are hardly any stars out, and no moon either. As they looked out over the bay, fires appeared to be burning behind the black silhouettes of the Imaksa Islands. Those must be Izaribi. So there is really not a good translation for this. Um, Izaribi are fires that fishermen would light on the surface of the water to lure out fish in the nighttime. So that's that. And as Squirrel and Show took in the sight, one fire became two, became ten, became too many fires to count. Man, look over there. Fires are lighting up all over the place. Um, interesting aside here, so the dun dun I render here as all over the place is actually sort of a banging sound, so it's like the fires are coming in like dun dun. Sho clapped his hands in appreciation of the spectacle laid out before them. They're so pretty, don't you think? Pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. Okay, that's a bit of a... He just says sticky, sticky. He just says it twice. Sticky, sticky. <laughs> the fires started to move and form themselves into a single line. That's weird. They're headed right for us. The fires came to where the water meets the shore, or so it seemed, and once there, they turned into samurai. Hey! Uh, uh, oh, the monsters! Within moments, the beach was full of armored warriors. They're just like the samurai of old. Taken aback, Squirrel and Show quickly tried to hide in the shadows of the nearby trees. Is she that the Heike banner? It sure is. So the Heike are a, a very, a very old um, Japanese clan. Uh, they fought a battle with the Genji in the 12th century, which sort of led to the formation of the first shogunate. A little history lesson there for you. The warriors swarmed over the mountain as they climbed up its face. Sho followed after them, careful to note exactly where the light and the shadows fell. Don't worry, Squirrel. I'm sure they can't see us. If you say so. <laughs> Which is actually even more laconic in the Japanese. Eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> in no time at all, they found themselves near a dark rise of hackberry trees where... These shadows of the past briefly squatted at the base of one of the trees. Looks like they're all praying. Oof, it, it's so loud. That's when the headman rose to his feet, and they all marched about the base of the tree. As they chanted, they shook the tree's limbs back and... Well, actually, it looks like they're shaking the trunk. They shook, they shook the tree's trunk back and forth. Whoa, they're really strong. 
A woodcutter had come into the forest to chop down a tree, completely unaware of what was transpiring nearby. Ugh, it's ridiculously dark out here. And when he emerged from the shadow of the tree line, What is that noise? It's so loud! He cried out, Ah! Taken aback by the samurai appearing before him. What? <laughs> One of the warriors rushed over, grabbed the woodcutter by the ear, and dragged him back. Uh, um, um, I'm gonna die! Someone help me! The woodcutter assessed his situation, and, thinking his life was likely now forfeit, he tried to hold the warriors at bay with his words. Remember, kids, use your words. Ready yourself. Help! Sho knew exactly what was going to happen, so he forgot about how weird this all was and rushed in to save him. Stop it, you monsters! The warrior's eyes flared, and they leapt at our companions. What? How dare you? Squirrel and Sho situated themselves to protect the woodcutter, but strangely, the warriors put up no resistance. Nudge, nudge. This is crazy. It's like swinging through thin air. That's when the woodcutter said, hurry, open this, and produced for them a small pouch. Hurry, open this, quickly. Sho took the bag, and inside he found a flint and steel. Make a spark! Sho did just as he was told. Oh, Sho's a good boy. <laughs> took out the fire starter and clapped out a few sparks. The human shadows cried out, Ah! and shielded their, hand, their eyes with their hands. The other way around, Nicholas. There we go. I think you stunned them! The warriors ran about like wild horses, and just like that, they vanished. They're gone. They're all gone. The morning star rose in the east, and nighttime, little by little, gave way to the light. Hmm, night has finally passed. Man, I was so scared. Across the water, a calm descended upon the Amaksa Islands. Again, this is this is an interpretation on my part, so... Um, it, it says, well, let me find this, Amaksa no Shima, oh no, it says islands, Shimajima. Amaksa is usually used to refer to the archipelago, but this is weird. I have these notes to myself to, like, explain this, and but it doesn't really need explanation. Shimajima. Anyway, whatever. It's almost as if last night was all a dream. <laughs> Common motif in this comic. The woodcutter looked like someone who'd only haphazardly wandered into that dream, and so he gave Squirrel and Show his thanks. You saved me! I'm, I'm so grateful! It's been said that in ancient times, a general of the Heike clan died beneath that very hackberry tree. Since then, no one's understood what the truth of the Shiranui was. One day, we'll use science to figure it all out. Okay, can I, a little, a little side about this. So, <laughs> if no one knew what the, <laughs> what the, sh the sh Shiranui were, how did he know to light a spark to fend them off? Questions. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's our story for today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really liked this video, you can support my work on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash it came from the manga, all one word. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links for which can be found in the description below. I'll be back next time with another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, but until then, and hopefully it won't be quite as long in between episodes, don't let the man get you down. Bye! Uh -huh.